Okay, welcome to the No Land Developer Call No Core edition. It's the 24th of January 2024. Um, so I'm going to present the screen and take notes. And um, we can kick things off. The first section that we usually address is the just what to know section. So it looks like we talked about having maybe a security update from Christoph and um, the integrating Go workplaces, Go workspaces. Sorry, Gilhelm yeah. or Christoph? Yeah. Oh sure, yeah. If you don't mind, uh, I'll jump in here. So um, hey everyone, I'm I'm Christoph. Uh, joined recently as a lead security engineer. Um, so right now um, uh, I'm kind of just still getting up to speed on everything that folks are working on, but um, on the horizon, a couple major projects that we'll be focusing on, uh, conducting some internal audits of key components of, of the GitHubland uh, system. Um, probably we'll focus on, some, focus on some wallet stuff initially. And, um, and then um, also trying to uh, ad, ad launch some uh, updates to the application security process start uh, maturing that and getting ready you know with the mind uh, mindset of, of being ready for the launch in uh, maybe six months or so um, and also trying to get some automated testing systems in place uh, getting more um, feedback about the code about deployments um, stuff that's deployed on the web all this kind of stuff just to start trying to get some more automated feedback on, on security across the organization as well. So those are going to be some of the major, major areas of focus in the next few weeks. That's it. Um, and as for Go Workspace, uh, it's more an ID. Like, um, it's not like they decide that uh, we'll apply it. Uh, it's still in the discussion, and uh, I still need to do more digging about, about it and uh, see what the implication of it. But it's much more like to have like one go mode for team two, go mode VM, and go mode land uh, separately to better manage like uh, dependency, to better scope dependency, and uh, avoid uh, some complexity of indirect dep dependency too. But yeah, it's still in a still in discussion, and I still need to dig to dig more about it. Um, yeah, that I must it for a workspace uh, for now. Yeah, and um... by the way, it's 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 open to feedback because uh, we definitely don't know, and we have not enough opinions to to take a decision. <laughs> But I will, I will still dig in uh, on it uh, this, this week and uh, the, the next week to uh -huh. see if it's uh, useful on uh, to have it. Okay. Um, I guess were there, I don't know if we want to wait for questions at the end. I know we have a Q&A, but if there are any questions related to the wallet security topic, given we have um, the OnBlock team here, uh, maybe we can wait till the end. Um, if that makes sense. I'm not sure we have anything to say right now, except that it's planned that the wallet will be audited. Um, yeah, I don't know, Christophe, or on block if you have anything to say regarding the wallet security, but yeah, it's basically we need to make a wallet audited, uh, reviewed, and, and release something that people can trust to use. Okay, if nothing to add, it looks like um, the first up is around the uh, the Go client version one. Uh, is this? Yeah, I'll take it here. Um, yeah, the Go client is out, uh, the first version. Essentially, it's a way to access the GNOME blockchain um, from Go. Um, it simplifies the calls. Uh, it's a wrapper up, uh, around essentially what GNOME key is also doing. Um, and it, this is supposed to simplify um, interaction with GNOME again uh, a lot. <laughs> and we already have a couple of um, a couple of updates to it, uh, or rather, they're they're in the pipeline. Uh, we're discussing uh, implementing um, uh, uh, support for message run, 
essentially. Um, and we're also discussing uh, adding support for um, multiple calls, uh, multiple message calls within the single transaction. Um, this is something that we do need to discuss. So uh, it is currently in the works. Yep, yeah, that's about it. Also, the docs, obviously, the reference will be out soon as well. Uh, it looks like it's heavily linked to with um, Jeff <laughs> on Birdie. Yep. Jeff, if you want to jump in here, take something um, out of it, um, please. Is Jeff here? Maybe. Okay. What, uh, sorry, I wasn't plugged in. What's ah. the question? No, if you have anything to add to the to the no client discussion, we're just mentioning it. But uh, if not, it's okay. No, I think you've covered everything. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, looks like Milos Gilham on the code base. Uh, sorry, code code base log standardization. The, um... Yeah. So this is this is actually <laughs> one 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 topic that we've been talking about tackling for for half a year, and we finally got around to it. So basically, uh, what we've done is we've standardized log usage across the code base. So any across basically Noland and Tendermint 2 and um, pretty much all of the packages that we have, both like in the mono repo and outside, um, to use uh, Go's S log logger. Um, this kind of gives us superpowers because now we can put out, put in um, like an underlying implementation like Zap or uh, Zero Log. Currently, we're, we're using Zap. Um, we're going to support out of the box uh, three formats, so console, JSON, and testing. Uh, you can set different log levels, so this is like standard stuff. Um, but also, one, one cool addition here is we now have um, log artifacts for, for our CI. So if something breaks in the CI and we're not sure why that some tests breaks or panics, uh, we can now download uh, the, the exact test log and, and see you know what what exactly happened right uh so yeah this is i mean this is just like one step in uh in just cleaning up the the node output when you when you run the node uh to give you you know much more meaningful data now um so yeah that's that's pretty much it for the for the logger <laughs> it's a small small addition but i i think it's yeah it's it's super super nice mm, i also just like this is nice <laughs> Okay, um, I think moving on, this is like what's planned uh, for the next two weeks. Um, I did add two things, I hope it's okay, but it looks like starting with the Faucet Hub. Um, I'm not sure if this is, who's grabbing this, Miros, is it you or John? Oh, this is John's. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if John is here, I'll just hey, jump in real quick. He's giving uh, a yeah, word. Essentially, yeah. Uh, the idea is essentially to have a singular place for faucets um, so that we can have a hub essentially that uh, allows users to just go to this one place and just just get um, tokens for test three, for portal loop, for possibly even um, partner um, test nets. And it's just a, an effort that John is leading uh, alongside with Alexis and, and the design team. Yeah, that, that's about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's also worth noting that uh, this this faucet hub is meant to be community based. Also, yeah. so if, if for example, uh, territory opens up a new chestnut, um, and they want people to you know have chestnut funds, right? Instead of hosting it by themselves, they can just add in their configuration to the repo in in the form of a PR, and it's going to show up if it's approved on the website. So this is just like a single page app where you can input you know and get chest tokens for for different node networks. No, Christoph has a question. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Quick uh, security question. Um, uh, what? Uh, I, I guess I'm not super familiar with how faucets work right now and how this might work after we centralize them in this spot. But um, what kind of uh, rate limiting stuff do we have in place to make sure that people don't uh, abuse it and, and kind of uh, exhaust uh, faucet resources intentionally? This is actually a really good, great question. Uh, the current rate limiting we have for 
uh, the chest three faucet is, I think, just just like a simple bucket. It, it, it limits like the amount of requests you can send to it. Uh, essentially, the faucet itself is just like a, it's, it's just a web server, right? So it's serving post requests. I can um, explain the current one. The current one yes, is basically rate limiting by IP, so super easy to bypass, and just some um, some uh, Google uh, captcha uh, recaptcha. Sorry, but it considers this faucet to be deprecated, and I can say what we target for the launch. For the launch, we target a faucet for developers, potentially uh, one payment if you have an old enough GitHub account with with activity. So in practice, you can have maybe some abuse, but it won't be like taking one toy. It, yeah, it won't be civil attack uh, in mass. Um, and we also plan to have another faucet for anyone, including non-developers. And this one, we are looking for um, privacy-friendly KYC system. So potentially maybe uh, checking a phone number if um, if we can make sure to 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 filter out all the all the phone number API services basically. So any idea like this about verifying that you are human and if you abuse, you are abusing once, twice, maybe three times, but not thousands of times. So looking forward from for suggestions here if anyone has ideas. But basically, consider we won't have a single faucet, but one for people to have gas and one for developers to be able to publish contracts uh, and interact. And maybe third, maybe additional additional faucet. The faucet design is made that as soon as the DAO decide to to cover a persona, they can do it. One of the persona is the developer. Another persona is the end user. Maybe we'll do, we will find I don't know a DAO with a goal to I don't know give some faucet to Discord users based on their activity or whatever. We definitely don't have a single model for this. Each DAO can receive some fund to make a faucet. As soon as the system looks good, we can we can unlock some funds for the faucet. So please, yeah, anyone, any system to make KYC where we just don't care about the about the name or whatever. Just we want to make sure that we have one human or or a limited amount of duplicate accounts. Yeah. So uh, just just a. Uh, uh, Back up a tiny bit, rather from from the specifics of of controls. Um, there's like two basic kind of attacks that could come up here. Uh, one would be um, like exhausting the the service so that's just not responsive, right? And usually you would deal with that by using some type of anti DOS service, you know, Cloudflare or CloudFront or one of these kind of services to kind of proxy between your your service and the outside world. Just, and they're they're pretty good at you know handling that kind of situations and if you try to reinvent that wheel, it's actually rather challenging. Um, and then the other one is just like, oh, well, I took all the tokens out. It's empty now, you know? Um, and um, so I guess you, you were sort of more addressing that second category. And that depends on the, the denominations involved, right? So if you have a if you have a, 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 a faucet that just has such a huge amount of, let's say, testnet tokens, and you say, well, here's like the maximum number of requests that the service can even take per second. And if you assume a full capacity, you know, it's still going to take a year uh, to empty out this faucet. Well, then it kind of doesn't matter. You don't need all of these other controls because you don't, you just don't care whether people are abusing it or not. Um, on the other hand, if it's like, well, I, on average, I need five tokens to do a test transaction and the faucet's only got, you know, 500 of those. Well, then that's going to be really simple to exhaust. So my first question would be like, how much is going to be in the faucet, and like, can we uh, uh, kind of you know estimate the runway of the faucet, so to speak, uh, before we introduce additional uh, countermeasures? On this, we have uh, an idea. Uh, it's to not send tokens to the faucet, but send tokens to a contract who is responsible to basically manage a, a daily pool. So in practice, the contract can be a millionaire. While you can expect that it has um, some some hard coded limits in the smart contract for a specific amount per day or something, and basically each day can reset or what. So basically, we can have um, a per day or per or per IP address or per per anything something managed by the contract, and then to have the finally the user uh, the the faucet service, the web service, the Discord bots, the Twitter bots, whatever entry point to the faucet. So the 
the way to communicate without having tokens, because the goal of the faucet is to give you some tokens so you can make your first transactions. This system can be just a client. So those systems will have a private key. They will be agents, but they just need to have uh, gas tokens. They don't need to have the, the tokens to send to people. It's the same, actually. Transferring tokens or calling a contract as a registered agent that will send the tokens and make additional filters is the same. So in this way, we can basically scale the amount of agents to prevent the DDoS, while um, while um, we're also having an on-chain uh, on -chain system to prevent abuses, like, for instance, saying that currently we want to have a limit per hour, per day, per, per whatever makes sense. So it's definitely not finished, but we since we want to rely on a, on a contract to make the, the, the actual transfer, and the contract can have a registered amount of agents with limits with per agent limits. In practice, we can yeah, we don't need to care about how we fill the, the faucet, the, the, the agent itself. The agent is an entry point, it's a facade to enter the system without gas. And the contract is the brain about not giving access to all the money at once. And the DAO Correct. can decide to basically uh, shoot down for one day or to reduce the uh, amount of tokens per hour or whatever just by making a, a small governance decision. Yeah, nice. OK, cool. Um, maybe a good place to start on this topic would be um, if there's not already one, just to have a, a open thread where uh, uh, on uh, HackMD or, or GitHub issues or um, where we're kind of putting all of ideas so we can document what's in place currently, what our ideas are, and then we can kind of prioritize um, yeah. what is realistic to roll out between now and, and when we want to kind of go live. Sure. Uh, you don't need to have perfect security controls as long as you don't give out all of your faucet <laughs> in, in, in one fell swoop. You know, if it, if it gets uh, clobbered for half a day, that's generally not the end of the world. We can um, introduce new security controls as needed. Can someone open an issue? Because actually, we have multiple resources. We have the faucet realm v1 exists. We have a faucet repo to basically create faucets uh, with different drivers. One of them is to have the money and transfer the money. Another is to actually call a contract to basically request the contract to make the final transfer. So we have we have existing resources. We have what I just said about ideas to to prevent abuses. We also have some ideas about the initial faucet we want for the launch. So please, someone open an issue if you want to, if you're interested by this topic, and I will make sure to add everything I have, I have in mind. <coughs> I think, Milos, you can also make sure to list what you made because you worked a lot on the faucet with other, other people from the team. And Ray, uh, I can I can link the what Ray be, what Ray made with uh, with Unblock because he is author, the author of the of the actual faucet uh, realm. And of the Discord bot, which is actually one of the agents that rely on Discord security to prevent um, civil attacks. Just because uh, Discord, if you have a verified account, technically they are verifying if you have a mobile phone. That your account is not so new. In practice, it's not perfect, but it's already better than just a capture. Yeah, if anyone can open an issue and link it, I will, I will make sure to add some, some content. So if, yeah, like, I can do that. Where would be the best uh, venue to uh, open this issue? Um, it's something for the launch. You can open it in the main repo. Okay. You can make a meta, meta issue regarding all the faucet topics. And we can start by just referencing all the existing resources or open questions. Um, and uh, actual, uh, yeah, and ongoing, uh, ongoing task and ongoing work regarding faucet. Great. Thanks. I'll take care of that. Okay. So, um, then. Um, I just put the request to open a faucet for Christoph. Okay, so um, the implementation of CH four thirty two or um, Morgan, are you here actually? Um, yes, I am here actually. Welcome. <laughs> uh, here. Yeah. Um, this is a PR to solve a need that I had in. Uh, uh, Gnotes, which uh, for which I thought the, there was there is no solution yet. 
uh, and uh, the way, like the the problem that I'm trying to solve, that I was trying to solve here, was that uh, essentially you're gonna have IDs right in any in any system, and if you were to use a simple sequential ID, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and so on, um, the problem you eventually get with that is that if you put it straight into an AVL tree, uh, because all the keys are stored as um, are stored as strings um as as you know like from file ordering on your computer or whatever uh 10 uh 10 10 would be less than would be less than two because of uh, lexicographic ordering so uh to avoid this there's a lot of solutions that have been uh, have been around for for a while um like and uh, as you may have seen on web services for a while there's you know this trend to move away from sequential ids into like fancy ids like the ones you see on many urls including the one on google meet um uh the idea here is to yeah provide a very uh, sort of a, an implementation of uh, a package which uh, which can allow to do that. The way I solved the Ingroches, by the way, uh, thank you, Michelle, uh, it was simply by having the, the number prefixed by a number of zeros. So that way the ordering would work correctly as the ID would always be the same length. Um, and, but the better solution that I uh, come up with and for which if you want to take a look and make a review, you're very welcome to, uh, is this extension to the second or sequential ID package I added. Uh, so, uh, like the 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 real thing you're, you're like, which is which is relevant here, is that there is a string method on the ID um, that is in the sequential ID package, and that will return uh, an I, an ID that is um, relatively short um, if you have values below seventeen billion. Um, so. Uh, essentially, for your first 17 billion users, they'll have very short IDs, and then after that, they'll be a bit longer. It'll be 13 characters long, uh, but uh, you know that's that's how many you need to represent the whole set. Um, and this is using a sort of under the hood. It's using a base 32 encoding, um, which uh, allows us. Like, like the the advantage of using a base thirty two encoding over base sixty four is that you can make it case insensitive, and uh, you can have some some other nice things which are human centered. And one of them is, for instance, that instead of parsing the character L, uh, like to avoid disambiguate to avoid ambiguities between like L, I, and one, they're all just mapped to the character one. Uh, and uh, this is an approach that I already had uh, for like a, a, a similar approach I adopted for another project a few years ago and thought this would be a really useful application also for now, where we have this need for alphabetically sort or sortable IDs. Was there also a question? I don't know. Um, I thought I heard someone raise their hand on this, but. I can't see the screen. So. No, it was Dongguan. He was linking the, the previous. Uh, okay. Um, I guess I have a quick question on this, um, if other people do. But it's listed as um, a bounties and works. Um, is the idea it's, that uh, it's automatic? Okay. Like every so PR it's... is being added to that project, but uh, so I think that's actually yeah, that's actually still private. So you're the only one able to see it because you're in the organization while everyone else isn't okay. um and uh, yeah it's something that john is working on as far as i recall okay so it's not that it's an open okay thank you what am i working on <laughs> sorry the bounties, the bounties and works project on github uh okay <laughs> yeah, kind of that was not an imposition. That was a question. Yeah. Well, it's kind of loosely related to Game of Realms. <laughs> yeah. News to me. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, um, I guess we'll have more information on that shortly because it kind of pertains to Game of Realms as well. Um, but we're thinking of reworking uh, exactly how Game of Realms might work to make it a little bit more approachable for people. Um, having the task clear cut. Uh, and defined ahead of time maybe would make more sense rather than hoping people will just um, 
figure out work for themselves to present is kind of the basis of, of what I remember in that conversation. I have a whole section on this too. We can kind of go into more depth. So, and and John and Morgan and I are meeting on this on this topic after this too, actually. So, and and for for reference, works. That's kind of at this point, it's using the name of an old system, but it's kind of just like reputation, like from like a Stack Overflow or something. You can kind of think of it as it's no longer necessarily pertaining to other systems. But um, yeah, we'll have more info on that soon. Um. Okay, then I will save it for the next section. Like um, the the last remaining ones, I added this, and I was just curious if we could get an update on um, because I know we talked about it a bit, but the portal loop um, updates or news. I guess maybe Manfred or is Albert. Albert, can you say something? Yeah, I'm yeah, busy, yeah. I was sorry, I was in companion mode and trying to unmute. Uh, yeah, yeah, so the, so we had we had a small issue uh, yesterday. Uh, thanks uh, <laughs> with a, with a, with a change of Miloš uh, on the the config, but uh, it has been fixed directly, and now it's more robust. So we won't have the this kind of issue uh, in the future. Uh, we have monitoring, uh, alerting is uh, alerting. I, I need to one last stuff to to do, but it's almost done. Uh, portal loop seems, seems to work uh, fine. I just make uh, just finished today the uh, a small binary named Auto Counter D, which uh, with uh, which is a small realm with a with a basic counter uh, that uh, is incremented every every x seconds. So it will help me to have more data on the portal loop to uh, see if it's working great uh, during uh, during changes and everything um, for now we uh, for, for now the, the the portal loop is working great uh, i just need some uh, some more data to, to ensure it's all good before uh, like moving it to be the the main gno the gnoland website um so and everyone feel free also to to push uh, some of your realm there uh test one uh test one wallet is uh, is on it so enjoy free money um and uh, what else uh yeah a small question uh, manfred uh, i ping you and signal about it uh, during this call uh maybe the the uh, the 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 misc loop repository start to be a big uh, a big large uh and there is no two three to docker image so it maybe it would be nice if the portal loop maybe could be uh, could have his own repository where uh, i could store uh, store the docker image and it will i, I would have more flexibility to merge uh, and uh, implement and debug and everything uh, on this repo so just a question, the open questions. Um, no, the, the answer is easy. It's no way for the V1. <coughs> okay. So we, we, let, definitely, we, we definitely make it too often. We need to start in the monorepo and extract later. Here we didn't merge anything and we were already complaining about the size. So no, no, let, uh, let's try to figure out uh, if it's stable or, or not, how much we want to, to reuse it. There was a question regarding do we want to be the only users of the portal loop, or does it make sense to consider, for instance, the Berti testnet to use the portal loop? I think the answer for Berti testnet should be maybe to try to have uh, GNODEV, so GNODEV to have flags so that you can expose it to the internet. But yeah, right now it's still a project that we don't know exactly. We don't know what we want to do. We don't know what will work for, well from day one, what we need to be updating. So we keep it here in the MISC folder. And maybe we will extract it. It's a possibility, but it's right not too early. Okay. It was just for the flexibility for having a stored Docker image push somewhere. But you uh, can push them. Actually, I, on each commit and master, we publish 10 images. If you want yeah, to add yeah, new yeah. ones, no problem. Okay. Why not? Uh, so push it and uh, add yeah, it yeah. also, and uh, it, would, uh, it, would, it would help. Uh, the, uh, this the, this point of storing two new images is not painful. Maybe we okay. identify painful points that will make us decide to extract, but definitely we need to try at least once uh, for for real. Okay, okay. 
Um, so I'm almost good with that. Uh, yeah, after maybe uh, I could need more uh, more tests, but with my uh, auto counter, uh, it will be it will uh, it will really helps. Um, in terms of infrastructures, in my uh, it's in uh, it's in my OKRs uh, to implement a large uh, logging system for all the company. So, like to gather all the logs of can all the services we have we, we are running. So it could really help. Also, uh, so I will I, I will put uh, after the all these logs inside uh, inside uh, of of the system. Um, but this this will come later. Um, just to, for now, I'm, I'm all good. <laughs> and maybe just before we get, jump to the next one, uh, Gilham on the no dev what we kind of like talked about with Birdie for the portal loop. I don't know if that's something that might help. Um, no, portal loop is not using no dev, it's using the binary directly, uh, uh, the, the compiled binary of no land. Uh, uh, no dev is mean for local development. Maybe yeah. we can we can put it on the server, but it will always, always be for, uh, for local development and uh, personal yeah, development. Yeah. We are actually competing solutions to provide the uh, the same service, but uh, yeah, with different, uh, yeah, it's two different opinionated versions of uh, the same concept of uh, staging that are always up to date uh, and make it easy to, yeah, to deploy and redeploy. The main difference with a, with a standard testnet is the notion of redeploying something. And GNODEV is managing it uh, in a way, portal up in another. So do not let's keep them independent. Maybe at some point we will consider that I don't know GNUDEV can be the portal loop, or that portal loop should be used by not only us, but also for our, by, by Bertie or other teams. I think they're too early together. I think we have some uh, devrel uh, task in terms of making them uh, more known. For instance, GNUDEV mm -hmm. should maybe have some YouTube video, should also have a readme mm -hmm. explaining all the get started. Uh, yes. Uh, guide yeah, guidelines and then also to start referencing them from the main readme. So right now they are here. Some people are using it. I'm super happy with each time we I saw I see some screen sharing to see that people are adopting the new tools. Uh, especially if you look at the Bertie's journey, each time uh, Jeff is working, he's using the dev. So it was a pleasure to see adoption of super new tools. But uh, yeah, right now they make sense to be to exist together and to be to stay independent okay i didn't know if we wanted to talk about a little bit what we talked about with birdie um on the no dev side um if that was helpful for maybe on block but one of the simple reasons why we're using no dev is simply that transactions seem to ex execute in much less time than with the GNOLAND node. Um, I think Gillum tried to tell me why, but uh, since we're using, since we're developing scripts to do bulk stress testing, you know, it really matters if GNODEV can, can add a thousand messages in one minute and GNOLAND will take 10 minutes because it just takes so long. I don't know, you know, maybe, Maybe uh, Gillum can tell me why that is, but so. I, I really think it's because of the um, consensus configuration that is different in uh, GNLN and GNDEV. I, I have like a, a configuration that is closer to the, to the when, we, when we do testing actually. So it's logical, like uh, it uh, should be much more faster. But yeah, I, I only think it's a configuration difference and uh, especially the consensus configuration. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, that's it. Okay. Um, then I guess the, sorry, the first version of an Oracle package. Soon, yeah. a few. Yeah, I've been working on that, and it's uh, yeah. it'll be ready for review here probably pretty soon, either uh, today or tomorrow. And it's a uh, package that's kind of has some building blocks for realms that want to integrate Oracle functionality. And uh, it comes with a um, one of our own that we're going to use for GitHub uh, uh, handle to GNO address verification, kind of to link the two. 
Um, so bit of a working work in progress, but um, version one is just about ready to, for review. And how would this, yeah, I don't know if anyone from the external side have questions on like, how would this, like with territory or? Um, this is just, it's based on a model. Uh, as part of this, I'm gonna add like some readme's and stuff in there, but it's based on the model that um, the owner of a contract can uh, create like an instance of an Oracle. And then um, they add feeds to it and um, basically an op, Likely for the first version, um, there would be some off-chain agent that's running that is owned by also by the um, by the contract owner that you know allows them to uh, just provide off-chain data or do some off-chain action and um, commit that result for uh, for on-chain applications to consume. Okay, uh, I don't know if there's any questions on all of the first part, but so, cause I can't see my screen. So, but if not, then uh, shall we move on to Michael and Dow and economics? Yeah, we have quite a lot that we've been uh, been working on here recently. Um, a handful of things that should be either releasing or getting put up for review soon. The kind of biggest priority and the, the most immediate one is the game of realms. And this will eventually be used for the tier contributor system to at least some level, but the uh, GitHub contributor uh, user profiles. So um, this ended up being a series of three different scripts in some handful of GitHub action files. Um, was able, John and I created an initial implementation of this before Miami, and then I've been working on refining it um, based on some conversations uh, down there. Um, it's been able to, we've been able largely thanks to GitHub Actions, I've been able to cut it down and make it way more efficient, way less code. Um, should be pretty straightforward in terms of uh, changing this to different repos. To start, this is just gonna be living on the Game of Realms repo, and I'm testing it in both a fork and a, a private repo. Since whenever this does go live, we'll need to make sure that the token being used for it um, has permissions to, to post and merge and things of that nature. So I essentially have it broken into draft PR, ready for review PR and um, merged PR scripts, um, where at each stage, essentially someone will post their draft PR into Game of Realms as a Game of Realms submission. They'll receive an automated comment thanking them from their uh, for their submission. And um, if they do not already have a uh, directory in Manfred's user um, like where notable contributions have been posted recently, et cetera. It'll essentially create them a folder with their username and inside that folder will be a blank resume for them to fill out and a blank notable contributions for them to add to. Um, then the script is also going to be adding a personalized CSV document that will track like total contributions per repo, handful of other metrics, start date, end date, um, PR number, we can add quite a bit to this over time. Um, I'll you know, be able to tally how many PRs they submitted versus how many were actually merged. Um, again, it'll just live on Game of Realms repo for now, but this has the potential to be um, put out to a handful or, or all valid repos after mainnet once uh, Game, of Realm, uh, Game of Realms concludes here and uh, it'll keep developing in that time. So um, it's just about ready to start testing. Um, about a dozen commits deep here. I'm gonna throw a, a few of the new revisions for the script up after this. Um, not sure if I'm gonna be able, John, Morgan and I um, have been meeting about this periodically and getting feedback from Morgan on PRs and in different systems. Um, not sure if we'll be able to start testing in our meeting after this today, but definitely by the end of the week, I hope to be able to start putting up draft PRs and going through the whole process and making sure it tracks it properly properly creates me a user profile, et cetera. Um, so that'll be the first thing that we hopefully get out here soon. Um, also this week, there's been a lot of focus on legal discussions around the tokenomics and, and DAO structure as a whole, um, just conversations both with our new general counsel, Nathan, who's been great, um, and a handful of the existing ones. So just a, a couple quick meetings with uh, Sean and I, a handful of other people, just, uh, just to kind of get their um, 
their take on on the systems thus far and uh in the check that box here as we continue building everything um dragos reached out regarding potentially modeling for flipando um which i think will be great there's a handful of uh different things we can do explore different scenarios uh sensitivity analysis which is essentially seeing which variables impact which other variables and how severely um to use that to kind of make smarter predictions about the future or potentially plug any exploit holes if we find them um we're going to be meeting to start prepping this process here soon um you know i've had some very early conversations with territory about something similar perhaps after we finish um, a handful of these deliverables here, but I'm, I'm always happy to, to help with this stuff wherever it makes sense um, with grantees in addition to core team. So um, we'll be building out, uh, yeah, again, handful of simulations, either either scripts or perhaps just a spreadsheet with plugins, probably a bit of both. Um, and uh, yeah, from there, just playing around with it. Once it launches, we'll be able to take um, real world data and refine that further over time. And uh, hopefully do some some cool stuff with it and and put some systems in place at least to, to keep track of it over time. Um, also, um, thanks to Albert and Thomas who made it significantly easier for me to both um, pull the data and clean the data. They largely did that for me. Thomas had a really cool tool. Um, thanks to the both of them, I now have I believe all the data I need to do the initial GovNo or Gov1 or whatever the the final naming ends up being. Um, airdrop simulations uh, based on multiple proposals instead of a single proposal like the Ganoland airdrop will be. Um, so I'm hoping to at least start prepping this by Friday and then into next week um, in tandem with testing Game of Realms, uh, the user profiles and the automation scripts, or not really automation scripts, more just profile scripts and submission scripts. Um, hope to be building that in tandem and hopefully by the end of next week um, we have both of these ready to, to check out in some some public GitHub uh, PRs or, or merges to, to go over here as a result. Um, and uh, yeah, so that'll be continuing in the next week with the script, of course, and the testing. Um, I have been putting more of a focus on helping out with docs and recordings and just general community conversations, um, including a, a meeting I had before this to um, where Christina is going to be starting kind of a high level building Gnoland series um, that I'm going to help with in any way I can. Um, I'm going to try to kind of similar to, to what I was used to in the past, maybe hang out Discord a little bit more often, um, et cetera, and, uh, and maybe help clear up some of the frequently asked questions that we can, we can definitively answer at this point, or at least things that um, have already been posted in these in these uh, public meetings here. So stuff that's already been covered, but helping people sift through it and uh, and get the info that they're looking for. I'm happy to help with that in in any other ballpark I'm able to as well, whether that's Twitter Spaces or or talks or or uh, anything that makes sense. I know Michelle and I will eventually be doing a podcast. So um, we, have to, we have to get a vote on the name. So. Yeah, right. Yeah, we're, we're having some reconsiderations about the, the name and Johnny had some really good search engine optimization points regarding it and kind of some uh, niches that are missing on uh, Spotify podcasts. So we uh, we might fill that in and that that will probably be very wide reaching in terms of um, what we're working on, but but also just kind of largely industry as a whole, potentially bring some guests on. Um, I have a handful of uh, of either friends or former colleagues that could uh, potentially come on that might be interesting. And then from there, hopefully um, gain enough uh, traction to, to cold call um, similar guests. So um, yeah, that'll be going over time. Anything similar to that um, or anything that I could help clear up, always feel free to reach out and I'll do anything that I, I can to help with that. Um, and then, yeah, finally, we have the new tokenomics meeting schedule. Originally, that was going to be switched to be a weekly with Jay. Um, unfortunately, that time did not work with everybody. So we're going back to the bi-weekly for now. Um, I need to change it, but it'll probably be exact same day, but an hour later than it was. Um, hopefully better for anyone on the um, west coast of the US, maybe not as much fun for people in Europe. Um, definitely willing to, uh, to, you know, an hour later, so it'd be 11. 11 a.m. here, I want to say maybe four, five, six o'clock, depending on the time zone over there. Um, 
so we'll we'll keep this going just to keep the bi biweekly present maybe keep them a little smaller as we iron out very specific fine details with less frequent public meetings i would love to get back to that weekly with jay and uh and potentially manfred and just have all decision makers in the same room so we can blow through some of the more fine tuning stuff and and get some um both docs and, and deliverables knocked out but um yeah go ahead manfred so the plan actually is to not do plan a or plan b to make another plan it's to make weekly meetings the three first one of the month would be the architecture one with a small committee jamie you and the motion and nathan etc and the first one is the usual one where it's more about uh, sharing with the rest of the company and getting more feedback. So it's still the, the, the plan is to have a weekly one, uh, but yeah, make three architecture and one debrief, three architecture, one debrief, if we can. Oh, awesome. Even better. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was kind of looking forward. At least, you know, we can always change it back to bi weekly whenever, but that's cool. I didn't think that would be a possible to, to fit any um everyone in then but yeah that's awesome so regardless yeah next tuesday we'll have it around the same time an hour later um at least last i checked i'll confirm that and then update the meeting schedule um but yeah um yeah like like uh, manfred said it's it's planned to combine uh to combine kind of smaller more focused meetings in addition to uh kind of presentation and feedback meetings with the the wider team so i'm definitely looking forward to to the combination of those two. Um, and finally, just to go with the Game of Realms profile scripts and everything, um, I'm working on a pretty in-depth readme just to make sure that's as easy as possible to uh, to understand and the uh, the whole order of operations and everything and, and um, how to potentially add it to more repos once we're ready to do that. So uh, yeah, hopefully uh, a, a lot of demos next week, at least one or two. Yeah. Okay, we were going to wait for a demo today, but I guess we'll wait for the next contributor. Uh, no core call. Yeah, I'd say probably like a yeah a week from today on will be great. Sounds Anytime. good. Thank you, Michael. So uh, I know we don't have so much longer. We might run just a few minutes, but we're up to section four um, with the VM and no lang. So I will just let whoever wants to grab the points and talk about them. First up, no VM bug fixes. Yeah, I wrote most. <laughs> um, so there was a bug fix by Dylan, uh, the, the usual, the usual bug fix. Uh, so now there's some, so some more, some more issues from, uh, the notices have been found out, uh, fixed, but, uh, anyway, uh, we're still on, on the chase to fix them all. Um, we got a new external contribution at, uh, at the beginning of the, the month. It seems like the Christmas break brought in a couple, uh, a couple of folks, folks to uh, give us some code. And uh, uh, this one is a very simple one to uh, that removes the um, flag help requested uh, error help requested error that ha that appeared if you if you typed in the GNO dash dash help. Um, Canal test now gives you full stack traces. So uh, you may not have noticed because the errors are not that useful anyway. Um, but uh, when you'd run the GNOME test on a, sort of on a on a on a test within on on a normal test on a normal GNOME test, uh, so not talking about file tests, uh, wouldn't actually. Um, print the whole sort of context and debugging information, including like the VM state when it crashed. Um, so this PR that I submitted uh, fixes that. And uh, then what have we got? We got improvements to GNOME Lint. Uh, so uh, Gilan is always crushing it on, on that side. He's probably going to make a text editor soon. Uh, <laughs> you're going to make a the GNOME IDE, but in Emacs. And uh, <laughs> um, I also wanted to mention this in because uh, I, I didn't have time to fill this in and fill the document before the call, but I wanted to make a shout out here. Uh, we have finally the GNOME you know, client package in the uh, repository. Uh, mm -hmm. This is something that was started by the team and has uh, been continued to be worked on by Birdie. And uh, it's you know the official client to connect to to uh, to a, uh, to a GNOME server, and 
uh, doubtlessly something very useful. We paradoxically already have that for JavaScript, but we did not for Go. So obviously that's uh, very useful. And um, something else that we sorted out was that we uh, we discussed with uh, Jay something that kind of everyone uh, on the team finds a bit controversial on the philosophy document. Um, still less controversial than uh, the code is the spec, but <laughs> uh, this this one was uh, was line that uh, that said under the CLI philosophy uh, on uh, uh, on the philosophy document that we would not have short flags on the comments, um, which is annoying. Um, if you've ever had to test GNOME code and want to see the output of the test, you'll know that you can't just use your uh, muscle memory from Go and just type no test dash V uh, and instead you'll have to type it all out like no test slash dash propose. Now while we haven't changed that and uh, if you uh, want to make a PR for it you're welcome to we at least clarify that that's something that we should do right because it's trying to match the behavior of uh, the Go command line tool. That's pretty much it for the side of things that have been done. Um, for what we're planning to do, uh, Mark is going to be working on something quite exciting, which is the interactive GNOME VM debugger. Uh, I have read nothing about this, if Mark wants to add a couple lines on this. Mark, it's all you. Yeah, OK. Uh... It's uh, the GNU debugger. In fact, it's it's uh, exactly the same uh, kind of tool which exists in uh, any uh, developing platform for decades now, and started with GDB, the GNU debugger, which 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 has set the standard, to the LLVM uh, uh, debugger, which is a copy of the GNU debugger, and the Delve, which is the copy of the GNU debugger for Go, and this is what exactly what we will have inside the GNU. And uh, so I started to, to implement it. And for that, I considered the, the GNU VM as the processor. And the, the goal of the debugger is to put this processor in step-by-step -step mode. So we have full control between each and every step. And uh, we have a, a WPL where we can enter commands to inspect or put breakpoints or continue or uh, analyze and, and so on, and that will be also the the entry point to have some more uh, monitoring tools. So maybe more or less control, but more monitoring where you want to to uh, to have a kind of X-rays on the running program to see the internal variables and anything which is on the of, of interest for the developer. So the, the goal is to have a view tailored for the developer of the GNU program, not the GNU VM developers. So this is really for the developers of, of uh, smart contracts and not not the, the core team. This tool. Uh, hopefully, if, it's work, if it works well, it will also be useful for for the internal uh, uh, GNU VM core developers as well. But but this is not the first goal. The, the goal is the, the smart contract developers. Uh, the status today is that the, the the structure of the debugger is there, is in place. The, the the workflow is there. It's also possible to have the the remote debugging using a, an external uh, uh, client using TCP uh, TCP connections, but it's not uh, usable yet. Uh, I'm, I'm still in the process of uh, implementing the various. Uh, the various internal functions to, to inspect uh, the, the state of the VM and also to match the, the internal uh, super fine granularity state of the VM uh, with the, the symbolic level of, of the program, which is, which is the, uh, the symbol names and the, the source lines and so on. So this is in progress and I hope that uh, in the next two weeks I will be able to, to make a first demo of that. Okay, thanks, Mark. Um, so we're also at the time, but maybe we can just spend, uh, if everyone can just spend five minutes, we, we get through the rest of it to, to update everyone.
I'll be as fast as a rap battle. Um, so we have been, <laughs> we have been discussing changes to the SD package. Uh, yes. So this one's an issue that I invite you all to take a look at. Uh, Leon has been pushing to, uh, to to sort of make a decision on this quickly because. Um, we need to have definite names on the on the SD package, which, as you probably know, is the mo one of the most important standard libraries we have in GNOME. And we have a few ideas on how to change things there. Please take a look at the issue, share your own experiences. Um, you know, Gillem will be continuing work on TXTAR and Egnodo, the two tools that save the most sanity out of all of us. And I will continue working on Gnotus. Speaking of which, Michelle asked me last week to give to give an update on Gnotus, which I couldn't do. So I'm going to drop just a line on that. Um, we actually, as the second package was part of my efforts to sort of continue on the efforts of Gnotus, uh, I will now be continuing also to um, do other things. And maybe this time around, by next time you'll hear me talking on this on this call, I'll also have integrated Adina into it. That was it. Thank you. <laughs> That's good. So, okay, moving on to the Tenderman 2. Is this... Um, yeah, I think it's okay, sorry. Yep. Yeah, so just to be as quick as possible, uh, we've introduced the new RPC endpoint, uh, or rather brought back the the old one. So now you can actually fetch transaction results from the node itself. This is something that's already offered by the indexer, but it was previously offered by the node, but now it's, now it's back um, in a much, much more leaner form. Um, there were minor, minor improvements to uh, the current uh, consensus engine implementation. Uh, this has been uh, work done by Petar, primarily because we uh, want to untangle some some code blocks and, and flows, um, and just alleviate the 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 strain that we've been having with with flaky tests and um, yeah, so similar similar issues. Um, okay, go okay. back. Uh, yeah, we've uh, we're adding support for. Uh, first of all, uh, WebSocket clients. So now you can actually create a client that uses WebSockets. Uh, previously, you can only do it through uh, singular G uh, HTTP requests. Um, in addition to this, we were adding uh, batch support for, for WebSocket connections. So if you're connected to a GNOME node via WebSocket, either through a client or a, a CLI tool or whatever, and now you, you should be able to send uh, batches just as you would on, on regular HTTP. And, Get get a batch response right. Uh, going back. Improvements to config. Yeah, uh, there were just very minor improvements to the configuration. Basically, if you've ever um, the the current problem we have with the config is you cannot actually specify specify things unless you you manually uh, modify them. Uh, the problem we used to have was uh, if you had like a custom configuration that you wanted to use. Um, the, the default parameters for a lot of these options in the configuration were not loaded by default, uh, which basically meant that you were getting configuration errors when you were trying to uh, load it in, right? So if you set one parameter, for example, in, in your custom configuration and you left everything blank, it will error out because you didn't have anything else set. Uh, and this is just like a mini fix for it, but we're planning a series of PRs for fixing the, the way users interact with the context. So it should be much better. Uh, going back. Uh, what's planned for the next two weeks? Uh, yeah, so um, Petr and I are teaming up to uh, implement uh, larger consensus engine improvements. So stay tuned on that. Um, and uh, yeah, creating guide fixes for multi node PDP setup. So Antonio and I are taking up uh, some work on figuring out what is the best way to to organize uh, multi multi node uh, peer to peer networks. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, just scaffolding down our our. our Current P2P implementation, figuring out how it can work, uh, and yeah, just stripping out stuff that's that's access. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned for that too, uh, and that's pretty much it. That's a wrap. So okay, so then just one other point is that we're good. next week we have a meme round. Oh yeah. Okay, so uh, stay tuned for next week when we have a meme round. Um, maybe just uh, is are there any like important questions that we need to address or shall we call it a, a meeting? Just uh, it's a uh, meme realm on the portal loop, obviously.
Ouais, t'as une départ à l'eau. <rire> I said the meme, the meme realms from next week on the portal loop. Ah. Ok. Je ne vois de même. If there's no other questions, ok, now I can see. If nobody else has questions, then uh, we can see each other next week. Thanks everyone for your time and thank you also to the team for helping build the agenda and the special call out, Leon. Thank you. Ok. See you guys next week. Bye bye. Oh, sorry, Andrew. Did you? Have a a click. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> See you next Thank week. You. Bye. Well, thanks, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. Yes, bye, guys.